I have gathered all my sketchbooks from 2016 to 2020, even down to that tiny thing sketchbook. And today is the day where I'll be showing you all my portraits, including some incomplete, never before seen work. It's about to be a long one. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's go. Hey guys, I'm Temi. If you're new here and you are about to see some growth, if you'd like to see older work, let me know down in the comments and I can do a video reacting to my older art. But the work you see today is just from 2016. If you're nosy, have a look on my Instagram. I've been posting all my drawings since 2012. The supplies I've used over the years have changed. I've linked everything down in the description box below and they'll also be on the screen depending on which drawing I'm showing. And there's a timestamp down in the description box if you wanna see a particular year. Most of the portraits are in this De La Rowney sketchbook, my absolute fave. And here is the first one. This was one of my first introductions to coloring pencils. I had just bought the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils halfway through doing this piece. So the left side of the piece was done using pastel pencils. And then I used Derwent blenders with Faber-Castell pencils for the right side of the drawing. Overall, I'm not in love with this drawing. However, I do like the hands and the clothes. I like that a piece of paper protects each page in this book. For this piece, I got a lot of comments that I made her a little too pale, and I agree that she does look rather pale, but I was just matching the reference picture. I don't like this piece as a whole, but I do really like the hair. I really hate this piece. This is what happens when you do things because other people are doing it. The blue background made it so much harder to create a good piece as well. I loved this reference picture, but I did not do it justice. However, I did like how the hair, the earrings and the clothes came out. And now we're at 2017. I really didn't do a lot in 2016. This is when I first got Pan Pastels, my absolute faves, and they arrived halfway through this piece. So the face was done with the normal Faber-Castell and then I used Pan Pastels for the neck down. So Pan Pastels are these pots of pressed powder. I talk more about them in my materials video. So have a look at that. So for this piece, I did it with Pan Pastels as all the base and then I used colour and pencils over the top. I really hate the blend of the face. I just feel like, ugh. <laughs> but I do like how the material and the choker came out. This was one of the quickest I did in this sketchbook because the face was so small, it was easy to get that done. And the hair was super easy with a pan pastel base and just white pencils over the top and a bit of layering with some markers. I choose my reference pictures and my subjects by deciding what I want to practice drawing. So I like to practice different skin tones, different hairstyles, different hair colours. And I basically just find pictures on Instagram and then I decide to draw them. Ah! Oh my god! This is one of my absolute favourite drawings. This is the first drawing that went viral on social media. And it's funny because I was initially scared to do the drawing because I'd never done dark skin, never done red hair. You know, a lot of artists shy away from dark skin, but that's why I've got this massive passion to teach people how to draw dark skin well. I've got loads of dark skin drawing tutorials on my channel if you're interested. I loved it so much that recently I did my own draw this in your style challenge and I loved seeing people's takes on my piece. It was just absolutely incredible. Remember my last nightmare on blue background? Yeah, I wasn't looking forward to this piece. I was quite terrified to be very honest, but I like how it came out. It was harder because it's so hard for a graphite sketch to show up on the blue background. So a lot of it just felt like I was guessing what I was coloring, but I'm happy with how it came out. So with experimentation, it was time to do some Caucasian skin and I really don't like how this came out. I wanted to experiment with blonde hair as well and I do like the hair, but the face I'm not crazy about. However, it was good to practice. Now this is another absolute fave of mine. It also went viral for me and I wish you could actually see it in real life. It's so beautiful. I'm overall super pleased with the colours and I really enjoyed experimenting with the material of her scarf and the flowers. I think the overall look of this piece is just incredible. One of my favourites of all time. I had seen this model all over social media. I was so captivated by her beauty. And then unfortunately I found out she passed away. So this ended up being a kind of tribute piece. I'm so happy with the piece, but incredibly saddened to hear about her story. 
I really hated this piece. I think for a while I really struggled to pick a good piece on a good colour background and for this one I think the skin tone just matches it a little too closely so overall I don't like this piece. For this one I wanted to experiment with drawing coloured hair so I was very interested to try this pink hair and I love how it came out. I think the hair looks so stunning, I'm not too happy with the blend of the skin and I think that's how I feel overall about my older work. I think I could have spent more time making it nicer blend. If I could throw this piece in the bin right now, I would 100% bin it. I don't like the blue background. Blue background is at it again. It was a challenge and I didn't want to skip pages in this book, which is why I tried it anyway. But it just seems like I'm not happy with anything on this piece. So I don't love this piece. I don't think it's bad, but I'm not in love with it. Again, it might be the similarity of the skin tone to the background, but I think overall the piece just kind of looks flat. There's not much depth to it, but a lot of you guys seem to like it on social media, so I'm not really sure what that is about. I think this just feeds off everything I just said for the previous piece. I feel like it's just a little bit flat because the colour and the skin matches the background closely. I really don't like it at all. But I do like the glossy lips. I think I did a great job capturing lip gloss. And now we're at 2018. Now this piece, uh, when I started it, the eyes came out stunning. I said, this is it. And then I did the rest of it and I was like, what? <laughs> what in the world is this? The face just came out awful, so higgy and haggard. The skin is not blended. Everything is just a mess. This piece was too random. It was so random. Rihanna randomly posted a Wild Thoughts competition. So I found this screenshot from her video and I was so excited to do it. Yeah, the screenshot was low quality. The piece just looks awful. And once again, we've got a blue background. <laughs> so maybe that, maybe that was the issue. But overall, I really hate this piece. Continuing on in my next A3 sketchbook, we've got Miss Robin Rihanna Fenty again. Yeah, I seem to have drawn her a lot, <laughs> but she's beautiful, man. At this point, I was really influenced by Instagram artists and everyone was doing this carnival pic drawing of hers. So I thought, oh, let me practice drawing blue hair. Yeah, no, this blue hair just came out so hideous. The jewellery was also quite ridiculous. Like it was obvious that I just rushed the whole thing. I do like the blend of the skin, surprisingly, but everything else about this drawing is not great experimenting with pink hair again I really do like how shiny the hair looks I really like the glossy look of the hair but I actually don't like this piece at all there's just an awkwardness about it that I can't put my finger on I don't think I got the likeness that well either unfortunately so this piece is not a fave now this piece I do like I really wanted to practice drawing gold. It was going to be my first time doing that. And this piece was the perfect piece because it was a portrait piece. But overall, I'm so pleased with this piece, except this gold on her neck. I think that was just hideous. But overall, I think it's such a nice, smooth blend for the skin. And I love how the hair came out. I noticed I hadn't done any piece with like purple so I had really high hopes for this piece. I thought her makeup looked amazing and then I drew it and I was like mm -mm, this isn't it. One thing I do like is the smoothness of the skin. I think I got that down to a T. I think I really spent time on that but that is Oh, another thing I like about it is the texture of her jumper. It was actually very easy to do but overall everything else about the piece mm -mm. This was the point that I just bought the Caran d'Ache Luminance set, the premium, premium, premium colour and pencils, and I was so excited to try it. So I tried it for this piece, and this was the point where I fell in love with Caran d'Ache pencils. I don't love this piece. I think the finish of the piece is incredible, and I think that's just down to the Caran d'Ache pencils. But also, I really like the ear. It's very random, but I really like that one ear. And overall, I do like this piece. And now we're at 2019 and I moved into a smaller De La Rowney sketchbook. I'm not going to lie, I don't love this piece. I think I was white pen happy on the face, but I do like the hair. I think I got really nice waves with the hair. I love the smoothness I got with this piece. I thought the eyeshadow was very cute. 
but I hate the lips. The lips are a no-no. It was meant to be like a matte kind of lip situation and it just did not work out. After seeing the new Aladdin, I loved the movie, so I really wanted to do this drawing, but I don't love the drawing. I don't know what it is about it, but the face is a no-no. However, I do like the textures of the clothes. We've got Miss Zendaya again. She's so beautiful, so I had to try drawing her again. I love the hair for this piece. I love the process of doing it. I love the skin. I love the eyes. I think I did a really good job on this piece. The speed drawing video is on my channel if you want to hear my thoughts going through the piece. Here's a sketch that I need to get back to at some point. And same with this sketch. She actually had really bright orange hair in this reference picture and I'm sure it'll come out amazing. So I hope I can get around to this at some point. I first drew Maleficent back in 2014, that video is still on my channel and I wanted to try again five years later and there has been a massive improvement. This video is also on my channel if you're interested in that. I was so obsessed with her aesthetic, I really wanted to practice white hair against her dark skin. I was very disappointed with how this piece came out, I thought it had so much more potential but the speed drone is also on my channel if you're interested in those thoughts. After seeing a draw like a printer video on YouTube, I wanted to practice that myself. So I was basically drawing each row by row, but I was trying to do it in color. This was so hard, so awful. And it got to the point where I was like, mm -mm, I don't want to do this. So I gave up. And now we're at 2020. This was a self-portrait challenge. It was originally started by Slu here on YouTube and I tried it as well. It was a six day challenge and disclaimer, it did not take me six days. The video for this is on my channel if you're interested in all my thoughts going through this piece. It was a very tedious process, but I'm happy with the overall finish. I attempted the six fan art challenge. It was an Instagram challenge when you pick six characters that you're huge fans of. I really hated the Viola Davis drawing at the top left. I don't know what it is about it, but it's just awful. So I could never continue. I really wanted to continue as well. So as you can see, I started the second drawing, which is meant to be of someone cosplaying Kim Possible. And I do think that one will come out good, but I was just so discouraged about this Annalise Keating drawing that I messed up. This was from a blending skin tone tutorial. This is linked down in the description if you're interested. Super powerful piece I did for the Black Lives Matter movement. The video for this is also linked down below. This is actually a forgotten sketch of Viola Davis. I love her smile and vibrancy. I'm, I'm sure it's going to turn out good, but we'll see if I get around to doing it. Another incomplete drawing. I liked it, but just never got around to finishing it. This is from the Toon Me Instagram challenge where I had half a picture and half a drawing. I love how it came out. The speed drawing for that is on my channel. It's linked below. This Normani piece, I never really liked the reference picture and I think I would like it more if I made the face bigger on the page, but overall I don't really like it, so we'll see if I get around to finishing it. This was a draw this in your style challenge from an Instagrammer called Hey Mary Jean. She has a really cute cartoony style and I had to find reference pictures from all over to make it into my style. It was an interesting challenge, but I don't love how this piece came out. The following pieces are in this Arteza mixed media paper and they are marker pieces. I did this skin tone comparison test because I was using the Arteza Everblend skin tone markers for the first place and I didn't love how the dark skin was looking. So I tried this piece and I love how it came out. It was my first time using markers as a base and I love how it came out. The drawing tutorial is linked below. Then I wanted to try the Uhuhu markers, so I bought those and I tried this piece and I love how it came out also. You guys love this piece. I've been asked so many times to make prints of this piece and if I can, I definitely will. But I wanted to experiment drawing non-skin tone portraits and I thought it was very difficult. The full video is linked down below, but I love the outcome. I did this drawing in celebration of 10,000 Instagram followers and 100,000 TikTok followers. The video is linked down below. I'm not in love with how it came out, but I'm not mad at it. I wanted a full grey sketchbook, so I bought this Arteza grey tone paper and I've just got a few miscellaneous pieces in there. This eye sketch was from a super glossy eye and I never got around to it. 
I did this quick lip drawing for TikTok. I just wanted to experiment doing glossy lips. These gold lips I did for TikTok as well and it was so difficult. I'm not even gonna lie, it wasn't an enjoyable process, but I'm happy I did it. I did it mostly in markers. I did this blending tutorial for beginners. This is also on my channel. And this is a bit of an exclusive. So my next video will be using the super cheap Crayola color pencils that are highly requested. So keep an eye out. I'm comparing them to the super expensive Caran d'Ache pencils. And finally, I've got this cute little tiny things to draw book. This is something I found in 2020 and I've just got super cute random things to draw inside. It just throws me out of my comfort zone. I would never randomly choose to draw these items, but they were all really fun. I've got process videos for these on my Instagram and my TikTok if you're interested in those, but I'm just going to show you quickly all of them. And that's it! Thank you so much for flipping through with me, it was so nice to go down memory lane. Tell me what your favourite piece is down below and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!